Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this is what we're going to talk about looping noise. So we're going to take a look at how this is built. We're using a few different noise techniques, but they're all basically just Perlin noise that's looped. So let's jump into this Perlin Bless comp. I don't know why I never really thought about this, but I got this idea from Daniel Schiffman over at the Coding Train. I'll leave a link down below to that because you should definitely check out his channel. Fractal noise is basically Perlin noise, so it makes a good representation of what we're doing. So if you take a look at this line, this is pretty much how we've used noise in the past. We basically start here and we end here. So you can see we're at a light spot here and a dark spot here. So if we looped, it would be pretty abrupt. So instead, what we're going to do is loop around in a circle using sine and cosine with the value. So that any point we start on, we end up back to it. And so our loop will just loop. All right, so before we take a look at our example, let's go through and see what other things we've built along the way. So in this first one, I'm just looping through with time and we're just offsetting characters. It's similar to what we've done before, but this one will actually truly loop. Then I tied that to an angle control. So like normal evolution, you can go from zero to one revolution and they'll be the exact same. So that'll loop as well. What's also neat is that since we're using this evolution slider, kind of like in fractal noise, every 360 degrees will match each other. So you can actually take this one, move it over here, and then put a two over here if you want to. And then you can have fast and slow, fast and slow, and it'll match. I'm gonna undo that though. So then we have other noise that we try to do different things with. These just use different text animators. And if you want more information, it'll be in the project file. As always, this project file will be available on our website for a dollar, so you can peruse it and see everything that we did to get to this point. So then I started playing with different dots. We have this blinky one. We have another one that's just fades in and out a little bit. Same kind of thing where the blinky one fades in and out, but it doesn't go all the way down. Started messing with arrows to make kind of a wind thing. This one was pretty crazy, so I slowed it down in this one. Then I have a circle. So basically, instead of like looping through this whole field, we actually loop around the circle. And so because of that, it's a seamless loop around the edge. We'll take a look at an example like that in the final. So I started messing with other things. This was initially going to be the one that I was going to show. I actually ended up making a sort of Braille-ish font in order to like show this thing, but I didn't think that this was really enough. So then I started looking for other uses. This one actually loops footage in the same kind of way. So this will be an infinitely repeating loop. I started messing with a graph, and I wasn't really a huge fan of that. So I started working with like a polygon in the center. And I started off with this triangle, which is kind of perfect because it can never cross itself because three points always make a triangle. But then I started to fly too close to the sun and I wanted to make a polygon. But I ran into a problem where they would cross each other. So maybe like randomly this point went to this point, then this one, and then here, and it ended up with this whole nest. So I had to figure out the order to draw a box. Basically, I just needed to sort my array. But then I ended up in another problem where I found out that sometimes Perlin noise doesn't just return in the range of negative one to one for some reason. Sometimes it goes outside that range. So if we look over to Expressionist over here, you can see this line. And I've dealt with that using a linear function here. Initially, I clamped this just so the values from negative one to one. But as I still want this to be smooth, which is the entire point of Perlin noise, I felt like just chopping off from negative one here all the way to like wherever this is would have been a little abrupt. So instead, I used linear to kind of shrink that range down. And that brings us to our final example. In the interest of speed, I'm going to just solo this main polygon and this color and this circle. I'm going to go back up to our polygon here. This code is what we have in our path property. And our sliders and angle control are over here. We have our evolution that controls this, just like the other ones that you've seen. And then we have noise scale, which smooths out our noise so that lower values of this make even closer values. So less of a change between each point that we're going to use. We have a seed, so you can actually change what this thing looks like. Undo that. And then we have variance, which sort of changes the distance between each one of these points as they're picked. So you can kind of see a little bit of how that works here. Basically, if our noise is on a circle, this helps it to pick points that are farther apart. So let's undo to go back to the original value. All right, let's go through our code. Let's see up here, we're basically bringing everything in. We bring on our seed value. We bring on our noise scale. We bring on our variance. Since this control can be very touchy, I divided this by 100. So it doesn't change as much, you can actually drag this value. And then we have an angle set to degrees to radians of our evolution. And this is basically what's gonna help us loop. Then we're gonna set an X and Y value and they're equal to math.cosine or math.sine of the angle that we have. And then we're gonna multiply that by our noise scale 
and Adder Seed. Then I'm going to set up two new arrays, one called Angles, one called Points. And then we're going to loop through here to pick four angles. And then grab the points where those angles intersect the circle and build our polygon. So the first thing I'm going to do is set N equal to Noise. And inside that Noise, I'm going to pass in an array of an X and Y value. In this case, we're taking that X value that we made based off of our angle that evolves. And then to that, we're going to add I from our loop here times V or our variance. And then the same thing for Y, we're going to add, we're going to have Y plus basically our variance. And then for A, for angle, we're going to set A equal to the linear of that noise value. As it goes from negative 1.25 to 1.25, we're going to go from negative 1 to 1. So we'll have a true negative 1 to 1 value here. And then we'll multiply it by 360. I could have changed this linear to be from 0 to 1 here and then avoided this check down here to see if this value is negative. But the movement seems to be better with that in there, so I'm leaving it in there. So basically, we're just checking here to see if this value ends up being negative. We're going to take 360 and we're going to add that value to it. And since this value is negative, technically, this is subtraction. And we need this check because say you had like negative 8, which would be like here, right? And you had 359. Pretty much everything should fall into that range. However, if you had like 90, you would be over here. So once we get to sort this thing, these points could end up going here, here, back here, and they'd end up crossing each other. So we wouldn't get a polygon in the sense that we're looking for. So that's why this check is in here. Anyway, once we're done with that, we're going to push that value to the angles array. After that, we're going to sort. So again, we get this thing in order. And just know that these values right here are in degrees for now. So we're going to pass a function. We're going to give it A and B. And we're going to return A minus B. The sorting function is basically looking for a positive or a negative value. If you return zero, it does nothing. They just stay in the same order. But depending on whether this is positive or negative, it'll flip-flop the items in the array. So after that, we're going to do another for loop. We're going to go through all the items and angles. And then we're going to set a new angle, A, equal to degrees to radians of that angle at position I. Then we're going to set a new point X. This could also just be X. I just didn't want to confuse it with the X and Y up here. We're going to set that equal to math.cosine of A times 300, 300 being the radius of the circle. And we're going to do the same thing for Y, except for it's going to be sine instead of cosine. And then to our points array, we're going to push that point X and point Y as an array. Then we're just going to pass into create paths, points. And that's going to draw our polygon. So that's it for that one, which I think is the more interesting of them, but we'll see. So then let's take a look at the arrows in the background. We'll solo that. We'll hit EE to bring up our expressions. Click on this amount, bring it up. So again, in here, we're using a text animator. You can see the first one basically just reduces the opacity to 50%. And then inside this other one, we're going to have the opacity go up to 100. And then the rotation is going to go up to 180 degrees. Since this could technically be negative 1 to 1 again, this actual range is going to be from negative 180 to 180. So the, basically the full range. So this one's a lot simpler. You see, we bring in that variance again, just like before. We bring in our evolution, just like before, except to that we're adding text index times that variance. So basically, this is offsetting each one of these from each other by that variance amount. So basically, each one of these offsets is going to be added to that same evolution. So whether this one's like 10 degrees or whatever, it'll be 370 degrees by the end of it, basically making one full loop back to itself. So then we bring in our noise scale, and we do the same thing as before, x and y. We take math.cosine of that angle and multiply it by our scale. And if you wanted to have a seed, you can add a seed there as well. And this one's a lot simpler. We just end up with noise, pass in an array of x, comma y, and multiply it by 100, because this is for the amount value. So this is actually going to go from negative 100% to 100%. So that's it for that one. It's a lot simpler than the other one, because we're not drawing anything. And then we can bring in our last one, which is this guy. Open up. Actually, I'm going to hit EE again, and then we have another text animator in here. Bring that one in. It's almost the same thing. You can see we add a seed to this one, but we didn't really need to. It just gives you more control. The only difference in this one is how our loop is set up. So you can see here we have text index divided by text total times 360. This whole part right here is where all the magic happens. This basically breaks down each one of these to their position. So the first one is zero out of however many there are. The next one is one out of however many there are, and so on. Multiplying those by 360, so this one will be zero, and this one will eventually be one. Because if there's 50 of these, for example, this will be 50 over 50, so this one is one. First one is zero. Last one is one. Everything in between is from zero to one. Multiply that by 360, so we are from zero to 360, which is a full loop. And then to that, we're going to add our evolution angle. So unlike the last one where we really didn't care where the loop point was in our whole field of text, this one we just want to be around the circle. So that's what this accomplishes. And then each one of those has the evolution angle added to it. So they'll all make one full loop through the noise as well.
So that's it for this setup. You can use this in a bunch of different ways. There are plenty of things I didn't show, I didn't even think of yet. So as always, it's on you to experiment. And that's it. Hopefully you guys find this technique useful. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. Anyway, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.